on your mark, get set, blender. Where are you? All right, so where we left off, we were just about to begin painting him. In the last render we were looking at, we had it looking like this. Um, now this is nothing near the final result. We will be tuning it a little better in GIMP, um, but let's just continue on. So texture paint mode, bring the fall off down, bring up the draw brush, and let's start off sampling this, this dark at the top. Um, brightness is a little high. We'll just, I mean the strength is a little high, we'll just adjust it. But when it comes to painting the colors, the rougher, more natural it looks, <clears throat> in my opinion, the better it comes out. So I just try to smear them, then blur them, then maybe paint them again, then sometimes smear them some more. Um, especially with this part right here, I kind of get some nerves how the intensities um, just don't go through. I bet there's an option for that. All right. So if we go back and undo to the point that was happening, we see that those kind of situations aren't happening so much now. And so there's our base coat. Completely nothing like the picture. But that's just our first color. So now we come back in. Shift F to decrease the fall. And I'm not using my tablet either, which would probably help. So, wrong one. All right. Um, Let's bring them into private mode. Then we go into texture mode. We can actually see him as if he was shadeless. Let's go ahead and sample some dark areas again. And there's nothing really to say here. You just paint, paint, paint. Um, sample more color. Add more variants. You know, if you want to add even more variants, you could go down to texture and use a cloud. But you definitely want to lower down your strength too. Because the clouds tend to leave a noticeable cloud pattern. And I'm sure everybody knows by now that if you ever need to move your viewport, that's always going to be just um, holding shift and middle mouse button to pan it or move it around. Um, so down here we see he's got a little bit of this white underbelly kind of, and I like that look. So we're going to sample that. We'll F, make it smaller. 
and maybe turn off the texture for now. This is only for the lower edges we're going to do this to. belly here. Well, not so much white, but you get the point. So, we will call this tutorial enough. Um, so let's go up to his color pass, I mean his color paint, and this is what we got. So we're going to F3, save it, however long that takes, and let's open our good friend GIMP. Go ahead and open desktop, slug, slug UV1. Let's see what fun we can have with this. So, I always start off duplicating a layer, a layer that I will later come back and blur about 50 pixels, and then lower the opacity on. But, I mean, I'll also duplicate that again, and then I'll duplicate it again. This one we're going to set to multiply and there's no specific direction I'm going with any of this it's just experimentation but if you understand you know color math and how that goes then it definitely does help And so that'll do for now. So the next thing is open All right, missing a file now, so we'll jump back into Blender and find out where it is. Um there's gonna be a snow UV Oh my god, no I didn't. <laughs> um, it appears that under good UV I have actually accidentally overraced I mean overwritten my old port my old UV setup, so we just have to go through and texture paint it again. Um Snell, DISP, 2048, 2048. Alright. So there we got our project. Our project shows, I mean our project shows that we were last over that. So if we go to get UV, texture paint, change this to our good friend the clone. we can real quick get back what we lost which this map is very important uh, for obvious reasons but also important because of what it does for our texture we need the textures to interact and you know that's that's good but we still need the size. Um, RX90. Maybe scale about there. Take this back to good UV. Back to texture paint. 
pop, 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 pop. And it all just blends together well. So seamless, making it seamless to begin with made it a lot easier for us to go back and repaint. Except for right here, there's a portion I do not like. And that is up there. I don't want to Now for something like this, we could have done it all in mirror mode and done a series of reprojections, but um, not so. Here we are, painting what has been wronged. Here's a useful tip. Take this, hide it, select this, unhide, come out. Now the only thing you can paint is that area and nothing up here. But we need to come out of texture paint, select the project so we can view it. R Y90. R X90. And no matter how we transform the empty, it gets us just a better projection. So now we can just come underneath. Texture paint, alt to unhide. And let's just get and it's good to not try to paint a whole lot from a distance. For one, it's slow. For two, it's unpredictable. So you just got to really get in here when it comes to texturing and just be personal. All right, so back to object mode or back into the project UV, RX90. Now I'll take this back to texture paint. Now, eventually, I want to come up with a way to have the options to switch between the UVs of this separate from it, as in try to make a script for it. But in the meantime, this is what we're dealing with. And we stretched that a little bit too much. And so we're done here. So object mode. Here's our texture, F3, and save it. So now if we go back into GIMP, we have And change its, well, first thing we want to do is duplicate it, hide one, and maybe go to, well, let's get in here close. So what do we want to do? We, If we go back into Blender and we look at our snell, we see that at the tops of all of these, they're white. And so at the bottom, it's more colorized. So let's try to imitate that same thing. Um, easiest way to do that I can think of is levels. Levels, it's kind of hard to explain. You just really have to mess with these tools to rationalize in your head kind of what they're 
called because I kind of call them different things in my head. Um, like this is the threshold thingy. Which, by cleverly pulling them, you see that that's pretty good description for it. There we go. Do no. Click the wrong thing. Nope. Not threshold. Apply levels. So we bring this in. Bring this in. And hey, come on, friend, come over. Yeah, you can come over. And just tune it till we get not too much, but just enough. So that way, if we change this to screen, we now have this texture. If we lower the opacity, filters, blur. Uh, we'll give it a gosh and 50 is a bit much. Five is enough to get Goldilocks to sleep in your bed. All right. So we will export slug UV1. We'll call this slug color R1. R1 is what I use as like revision one, revision two, and I just keep incrementing them as I make them. Well, it's better than parentheses two and all that. Um, and this is still recording. So we're just going to wait for GIMP. GIMP is done. Now we're back in a blender. So we have our good UV, our project, and our color maps. Um, which to get UV and the color map, both of their UVs are pretty much laid out the same, so it doesn't matter. Um, now for this... This one we're going to make color. We're just going to call it snell underscore color. And we're going to open up the file we made, which was snell color r1. We're going to take it off and put it on color. And if we render that out, that's what we have. We have our snell. What a nice color. And we're going to control J, I mean, just press J, jump to a new render buffer. And now we're going to All right, before we do this part in particular, actually never mind. I was going to say we should probably do some levels on the normal map since it's a black and white grayscale, but this will actually work pretty well. Um, set this to good UV set this to normal and change this to snow underscore normal I think I originally said it was a slug but um, you know what's the difference between snow and a slug maybe it's that one has a shell and the other doesn't I'm not exactly sure alright so what do we see here happening well we may need to change that to point three. We also, RZ, may want to look at this from a different angle, like so. We see that our color map is a little dark, so we click on the GIMP, enjoy its flash screen showing for only a brief moment before loading it, and Windows is a lot slower. All right, and so how to improve the color? Well, we can do levels, but I like curves. Curves just do me right every time. Can't get better than that. All right, back in the blender. Let's bring up our select color R1. That's what it looks like right now. Now if we choose reload image, that's what we got. 
if we go over here and hit reload we already see it's there so if we re-render this we have a much better looking slug however there are some issues with the color that I'm not quite fond of happening so in the next segment we will deal with these small things but let me leave it off with a full quality BPR I mean a best quality render using ZBrush terms um, but they're not raised off the surface enough and that is absolutely hideous so um, let's raise up the normal value on the normal map maybe point seventy one let's see how that does me and so that is looking better however definitely need to expand the edges because that's what's causing all of these cracks here is the scaling and subsurf or and all that together like the subsurf I think shrinks on UV so it tends to cause this because when you're normally setting them up it's not applied or something like that I think that's what I understand but either way it doesn't matter what's causing it all that matters is that we know how to fix it so we will be in the next segment cleaning this up and getting it looking even better maybe we could even go so far as to paint a specular map um, so we'll do that in the next segment.